Welcome to A Night with a Medium, starring Tessa Del Zappo. Broadcasting live from the Yawawa Media Studios, high above the beautiful city of Niagara Falls, New York. Thank you for joining us, and we welcome each of you for a spirit-filled evening. Everybody, welcome to a night with a medium. I'm really excited about tonight. We've had some amazing guests, and tonight uh, I'm going to be interviewing. Well, I have interviewed Steve Gonzalez. You know him from Ghost Hunters, uh, more recently Ghost Nation. He's worked on some documentaries. He's just an amazing person. Uh, more recently, Ghost Nation. He's worked on some documentaries. He's just an amazing person, uh, TV personality, uh, very well known in the paranormal world. So, um, really excited to share the interview with you. Um, and then following that, as always, I'm going to be taking your calls, doing some live readings. And uh, actually today I'm going to be picking a person who subscribed to my YouTube channel. So if you're following me on Facebook, Instagram, any of my social media, what I've been doing is um, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tessa Del Zappo, I am going to pick somebody randomly every single week to win a free 15-minute phone reading with me. So uh, following this interview, I'm going to hop on over. I'm going to take your calls live and then I'm going to announce the winner of the free reading for the week. Well, it's so nice to finally, like, virtually meet you. Nice to meet you. Here I know. Are. Here we are. Thank you so much for doing this with me tonight. I think we're recording. Yep. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so thank you for doing this tonight. I started this podcast, um, you know, over the pandemic because obviously entertainment just got shut down. Um, and I've had fun with it. I mean, I love that I can talk to different forms of entertainment or people within different forms of entertainment and then connect it kind of back to what I do. And obviously, you and I have kind of a lot in common in the way that we work and the things that we work with, right? Of course. I mean, uh, the paranormal, it, it's all, you know, one umbrella, honestly, no matter Truly. what uh, you do, no matter what methods you subscribe to. Yeah. Uh, we're all sort of in the same boat, you know, for sure. And very true. You know, Disney and uh, of course, uh, Disney. Of it's, <laughs> I think it's it would be so funny, like if people knew because you and I have talked, but like literally never about paranormal. We only talk about <laughs> Disney. <laughs> It's like, were you there? Yeah, right. I was too. What? <laughs> what did you buy from the gift shop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Show it to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I know. That's great. I want to ask you, you know, how did you, how did you jump into the paranormal? Like what was your driving force to even want to get into that? I was always interested uh, in the paranormal. Uh, you yeah. Know, and um, I, I don't remember when it exactly started, but I remember... Uh, watching a movie called uh, The Entity uh, when I was yeah. really young. Yeah, and uh, terrifying even still to this day, you know, even though obviously, you know, nobody's getting electrocuted and, and nobody's, <laughs> you know, or so we freezing. think. <laughs> well, so we, exactly, yeah. Right. Um, uh, but it was terrifying, you know, and I was sort of a bit uneasy and uh, I wasn't supposed to be watching it, of course. And my mom was like, what are you doing? Why are you watching this? And I saw at the end, you know, based on true events. Uh, yeah. And I remember that sort of being like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and Ghostbusters, to be honest. Um, yes. I thought those guys were the coolest. Uh, yeah. When I was a little, little kid. My and, kids and love it. Do. Yeah, my <laughs> yeah. kids now love it. They're six and four. And wow. we have like Slimer, you know, stuffed animals and they want to wear, you know, like the uniforms all over the place. They want to hear the song. Like in the car, we have to play either Disney or like Ghostbusters theme. <laughs> and they know it and they love it. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> do, they, do they watch the cartoon at all? The real they Ghostbusters? Do. Yeah. That's yeah. better than the movie. I mean, not really, but. I found them on like YouTube. Like I, oh, yeah. I was, you know, and they love it. They're always watching that, the, the actual movie. Um, yeah. So I can understand how that would drive you to you know want to know about the paranormal and stuff like that but what did you do before that well before that i was a a, a child uh, <laughs> i don't know i was sucking my thumb i guess <laughs> i was i was playing with gi joes and watching star wars and uh, <laughs> i was you know digging in the dirt that sort of thing right um but but 
in all honesty, you know, the, the interest probably started around seven or eight. Uh, and then, you know, by 15, I was really uh, deep into it, uh, you know. So uh, before that, um, not much, uh, but before... I should have I worded it more. <laughs> well, like, I, I should have worded it better. <laughs> That's coming from of... me. <laughs> like, I literally, like, threw my kids out the door and was like, I got to go to the studio and do an interview. So my mind's everywhere. But... Um, more so like, you know, cause this is really your career, you know, is, right. is now television and things like that. But what did you do before? And then how did you kind of transition into this? Or was it always kind of part of your life? And then you just kind of transitioned over? I see. Uh, it, it has always been a, a part of my life. Uh, honestly, as far back as I can remember, um, it wasn't, you know, all consuming like it is now. Uh, but, uh, a, as quick of a, a timeline as I can give you, um, you know, a hobby through most of my teenage years, uh, early teenage years, I was very fortunate uh, to work with Ed and Lorraine Warren briefly. Uh, and that's when I met John Zappis and a few other people. Yeah. And, um, but still it was just, uh, you know, fun. Uh, yeah. And then by 18 or 19 was really investigating and, and trying to help people through the, even though I was a, a you know, a young, per, a, young a, a kid, essentially, um, but was still able to offer some people and, and uh, just kept going with it. But it, there was no such thing as a career in yeah, the paranormal. So uh, you know, it didn't exist. It just right. didn't. There's no such thing. Um, if you were like, uh, you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren or, or Lloyd Auerbach, you know, somebody who, uh, you know, created a career out of it through speaking engagements and uh but even then uh you had to have books and you had to be you know and there were just maybe one or two three people in in the, the country the world uh, really so there's no such thing as a, a career so i was a jeweler and a police officer and uh uh traveled a few you know different roads yeah uh, and it was still you know a, a hobby yeah uh, but we were still doing speaking engagements, you know, uh, uh, Jason and I uh, and Grant and a few others, we did speaking engagements at Penn State and I did some at the Ryan Research Center. So we were still in it. And and uh, uh, and then uh, the opportunity to do a television show came along in, in I'd say 2002, mm -hmm. uh, early 2002. Uh, my timeline could be off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and we said said no for a little while uh, because we didn't know what that would even mean. You know, Jason right. and Grant were plumbers. I was a, a cop and, and working in yeah. jewelry and, and uh, Roto Rooters. That's all I remember. Like when it first yeah. came out, the Roto Rooters truck. <laughs> they were, uh, yeah. And uh, you know, people sort of jabbed at us for that. But if it wasn't for Roto Rooter, honestly, that show probably would have never existed uh, right. because they did a lot of the upfront. Uh, things to allow that to take place. Uh, so, um, but yeah, those guys were, were definitely plumbers. Uh, but <laughs> uh, we had said no for a little while just because, you know, the paranormal. And back then you couldn't bring people to anyone's house. You know, nobody wanted anybody to know their house was haunted. Uh, right. So we had big time client confidentiality. Sure. Um, and what we had done is we we disproved a haunting in a court of law. Uh, we showed that somebody was taking a, a cocktail of medicines that uh, created hallucinations, and um, that uh, you know became a story uh, that went on the newspapers and all that stuff. And that's how we got that sort of uh, recognition that way. But we said no for about two years, uh, and then 2003, the end of it, we'd said okay. Uh, let's do it um and we did it and then that was ghost hunters uh, yeah in the very beginning it was just called ghost you know they didn't know what the title was we fought that name actually for quite some time did you we're, we're not ghost hunters like we're not hunting right <laughs> what are you right. talking about and to us uh, you know ghost hunters were you know the people running around graveyards and like just kicking over headstones and like we're looking for ghosts ah. right you know, we're <laughs> yeah. like we're not we're paranormal investigators but you know they won that argument obviously and, and which is fine it became you know what, yeah. what it, what it became. kind of iconic in the paranormal world luckily we we you know we were the first uh, of that kind of show right um, it wasn't until about 
maybe four years, then Paranormal State came along and Ghost Adventures and a few others. Um, but that was when, you know, the possibility of a, a career, you know, right. would ever be possible. And sadly for, you know, if you're looking at the paranormal field in that respect, that may be the only way to make it a career still, uh, you know, so unless, yeah. you, uh, you know, you can do it and make money, uh, not at investigating. Anybody who charges to investigate somebody's house that is, is honestly criminal, mm -hmm. you, know, you shouldn't do that, you know, it, do you want maybe some some gas money or, or you know maybe you know but to charge for your services is uh, terrible in, in this this field you know um i mean if you're offering a true service you know that but in terms right. of a paranormal team going to somebody's house um you know that that's just not something that, that is done yeah uh, no so, i agree uh, there's still not really much of a way to uh make it a, a career you know um, yeah well, you were lucky enough to, you know, have the platform where, you know, it was broadcasted and, and I think it helped people to really understand because I think the same thing with like myself being a medium, you know, that wasn't accepted, like, especially when I was little, you know, we didn't talk about it. Uh, people who can feel or see spirit, um, it was taboo. And then you start seeing, you know, shows coming out with these other mediums or even, you know, you know think Paranormal State, Chip Coffee, things like that. These oh, sure. people are coming out and they're like, we can do this, you know, and then it started to become like people are like, oh, wow, we're not crazy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe I could do something with this. I could actually use it and people won't think I'm nuts. And I think the same, though, with like ghost hunters and, and the paranormal world, like people have these experiences. It's not always paranormal. It's definitely scary but how do you understand what is and what isn't, you know, and that there are people like you willing to look into it and help, you know, and I think it really created this kind of, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know. What, I don't know what the word is for it, but you understand what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, people, you know, we, we found that the whole country wanted to be armchair investigators, you know, they right. all wanted to go along on this adventure and see if there's something there, you know, and, and I don't think anybody knew that existed because I don't think people as a whole knew that there were really even these paranormal teams in the right. country because back right. then there were maybe five or six in the entire country. You know? Yeah. Now there's one in every city, you know, literally right. every town, which is great, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's very interesting. You it know, is. The, yeah, it is, you know, with, with what I, and I think you had mentioned John Zaffis a while ago, but I met him, I went to, I went to school at Niagara University, I did my bachelor's and then I studied my master's there, and he came to Niagara University, and he did this investigation in the church part of our university, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, he brought like the ghost box, I, you know, and I, like, and I didn't know what that was, and I'm like, okay, I know I feel and see spirit, I'm just going to go because he's on my campus, so I did. And I remember like as the medium picking up on things and then hearing things over, you know, the box and things like that. And so it really, and this was a long time ago. And I'm like, I, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know that that was possible, you know? And then you start seeing them come out on the shows and people are using these things and it's kind of, it's proving, but also disproving things. And so, you know, I really like that aspect because I always say like, not every place is haunted, you know, not every place, there's no demons just everywhere, you know, it, it's, it can definitely more times than not be, you know, debunked and, uh, you know, people don't always necessarily have to be scared. They just want to understand, you know, Absolutely. so uh, I think my mother and I, my mom, we, we used to go to Lilydale all the time when we were little. And I know you guys had gone there numerous times and she, we went the one time I went with her. She's like, they're going to be there. I love Steven Tango and I want to see Jason and Grant. <laughs> so we tagged along and we went to see you guys there at Lilydale and did our thing there and stuff like that. So I think it's wonderful what you guys have done and then what you continue to do. Now, more recently, you're on Ghost Nation. Yeah. Yes. How's that going? Yeah. Fun. It's great. Yeah. yeah. The show is, um, it's very different you know ghost hunters yeah. uh became the you know the pursuit for the, the best and, and piece of evidence and, and the, the most haunted place and that's super fun you know it really is but you're not necessarily helping anybody you know uh, the owner of x asylum she doesn't want to understand her ghost she already understands it you know right. he already knows they're there he doesn't need any help but, but it's fun as 
an investigator and as a viewer. Yeah. Um, but this show, Ghost Nation, uh, we are going those extra lengths to make sure that people do get uh, resolution. And even yeah. more so, uh, local teams everywhere, you know, around the country. Yeah. We meet up with them. We, we hang out with them. We talk to them. We, uh, we investigate with them. And, and uh, you know, not that we're there to teach them things, but they end up picking up, you know, some things from us. And, and in turn, we learn things from them. You yeah. know, I've learned quite a few things from some of the local teams and investigators, different tricks, techniques. Uh, I've met a few that, you know, will probably be a, a friends of mine for life. But, you know, yeah. so, but helping people uh, really, you know, I, to be honest, I didn't know if it would be possible through the confinement of television. Sure. Um, but what Travel Channel, and this is honest truth, what, what Travel Channel and the production company you know, has allowed us to do uh, is really take as much time as we need uh, to investigate. Right. You know, if we need uh, two weeks, we're there for two weeks. If we need a week, it's not, you know, we're there for a night, we're there for two nights. We really do a, a week's worth of research and we yeah. really dig in. And uh, you'll notice on this investigation, or excuse me, you'll notice on, on this show, Ghost Nation, uh, the investigation unfolds in front of us. It really does. You know, yeah. we'll come across something and be like, whoa, this means we need to start seeing if this person is here. You know, maybe it's not who they think is here. Let's start, right. uh, you know, and, and with other shows or, you know, with our previous show, all that information was there up front. We had what we had, even if we found something or you couldn't change the course, you were just yeah. on that ship and that's it. Yeah. Uh, this is course changing in real time. Um, and it's, it's great. It's awesome. Uh, I love it. Do, yeah. yeah. I love it. You <laughs> guys are doing great, honestly. And <laughs> I got to ask you too, like, do you, I can tell, and, and I've said this to somebody else in the field, but like, I notice that there's a lot of use now more so than before of like your own intuition when it comes to investigating and helping and like what are you sensing versus what might come through on you know an evp or whatever might be used at the time but do you feel like your intuition has heightened or that you use your own intuition in these situations that's actually a great question um i've seen that i guess you'll call it a trend also where there there's more of a, a humility to it now and less of a, a militant style yeah. of with your equipment and you know um i've most certainly seen that and not just with our show or others uh, across you know right. the whole landscape of paranormal television and you know teams that uh, are not televised um i think a lot of it is the field has come so far that we're understanding things more yeah and someone like me who has no psychic ability or mediumistic senses or, or I've, I have none of that, but I 100% do believe over time I've tuned in uh, to things that um, I just know, you know, right. your body, it's your fight or flight, you know, it, it is, your body can tell when there's something else in, in, a, in a space with you and uh, you react to that. Yeah. You and, and that's what I think I, I am reacting to and, and some others. Um, I think that's part of it. I think another part is, is, you know, we, we utilized all the equipment. It, it got to a certain, you know, it's at a crescendo now where we're trying to develop and see what's next. Right. Um, so why not now explore other capacities? You know, what techniques can we uh, expand on? What can we invent in terms of uh, new techniques and protocols and, and how can we do things? So we do a lot of theorizing yeah uh, you know and that sort of thing but we're still very gadget you know heavy and, and uh, even in our new season i think we'll, we're probably using you know three or four new pieces of equipment um but we use them systematically you know yeah. and as they're needed to be used not let's throw it all out there <laughs> right you know so it's yeah. like hey this works for this you know this works for that and let's not try to cross you know pollinate them let's use them for their specific uh, reasons and uh yeah, that's a good question. I think it's a lot of those things, but I think yeah. also uh, people are realizing that maybe they're a little more in tuned to spirituality than they previously thought they were. Yeah, I think there's a part of that too. 
And you explained it pretty well. It's like you know, with having any ability, any intuitive abilities, there's different avenues. So, I mean, somebody could be very mediumistic and some people could just be psychic. Other people are more empathic, meaning reading energy and things like that. And truly, I feel like, especially you being a cop before and going into a field where it requires being able to read a situation and protecting people and like kind of knowing what needs to be done before you make a move, you have to carry a level of that type of intuition, like an empathic ability where you can read energy or kind of feel things, you know, and it's just a different avenue. And obviously by working in the field that you do and doing everything that you have done, I'm sure your experiences have gotten you to kind of tune in and hone in on what's going on around you. And, and you know, just being in those environments and different places with different types of energy, I'm sure, you know, you do. It's like a radio, like you just tune in, right? And um, yeah, and I am seeing that more so, I think, in, in some of the newer, in the more recent years, shows using more intuition. And I find it fascinating to have somebody, you know, like a medium come in or somebody with that ability and picking something up and then having it proven, whether it be from historical facts or maybe the equipment being used, uh, names popping up, things like that. Like, I love when the two collaborate to validate each other, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's in, important, you know, and it's important for both sides to be yep. open to it, you know, psychic and, and, and medium, uh, you, you know, style investigators. Some of them may not be open to investigators like me who are a little more scientifically minded, not science, you know, but you know, right. try to investigate with that sort of, uh, you know, protocol and procedure, Yeah. Uh, you know, and the other way as well, we have to be willing to, uh, and you're right, it's great when it, when it mixes and, um, you know, I, I've become very close friends with a lot of psychics, you know, Chip Coffee, yeah. you mentioned, he's very near and dear to me. Uh, uh, he's great. And, uh, he's just so fun. And, and, uh, you know, when you see him work, you know, there's a, a, a passion uh, there and a level of commitment where he, you know, uh, yeah, he is really tuned in to these people and their emotions and what they're doing. And, and yeah. it's quite awesome to see. And you could tell uh, he's, he's passionate about what he does, you know, and he, he worked, he did a um, affair with me last, I think, October here in Buffalo. He was at the Statler with me and we, our tables were like directly next to each other. So I got to bother him a little bit you know, throughout the day <laughs> and try to pick his brain. And he did a gallery reading and I did one after him. And um, no, he's, he's great. And I, I loved watching him. I like watching him interact. He, he's very, you know, humble. And, um, you know, those people are admirable because this, you know, being a medium and things like that, it could definitely be taken advantage of or misconstrued. And so to see very genuine people like himself uh, out there and doing what he does is, is great. Oh, and you're yeah. right. Yeah, Absolutely. you're very right. Yeah. yeah, it's fun to see, you know, and they're all, you know, when you deal with, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call it, that side, I guess, of, of investigating right. or that side of spirituality. Everybody has their own, you know, nuance and way of doing things. And uh, yeah. it's quite interesting. Uh, and I had a, a, a woman say to me once, and I only say woman because I, I forget her name. But, <laughs> I'm uh, bad at names too. This, so don't uh, <laughs> and this you know, she'd said something to me, she said, well, I know you don't have these abilities and whatnot, she said, but to help you sort of understand what might be happening to us, and I think she was, uh, you know, she was a, a psychic as well, and she said, uh, so, uh, you know, imagine somebody in your imagination, like, standing in front of you, and so I did, and she said, now, get them to run and jump out that window, I said, sure, easy, I see the dude run and jump out the window, you know, right. head first, he's gone. And she's like, all right. She's like, but I can't get them to do that. You know, like they're just coming, you know, they're doing whatever, coming up to me, doing whatever. And they're just there. I didn't make them appear. I can't get them to do things. They're just there. Right. And uh, they're telling me things that relate to the physical world and is tangible in current timeline, you, you know, uh, and that was fascinating to me. I said, hmm. it's actually very accurate. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I said, to you, you really, uh, you know, that this is quite fascinating, uh, you know. And uh, she even said, you know, look at me right now. And I looked at her. She said, no, you know, turn away, you know, and, and remember me. And I did. And she said, that's sort of what I see. You know? It is. 
Uh, but not every psychic or medium I see, you know, uh, has it in that same way. You know, Absolutely. some are very much different. It's, it's very fascinating. It is. There's, you know, what she is describing is clairvoyance, being able to see in the mind's eye. And, you know, for me, I do clairvoyance as well as clairaudience. So it's the same as like remembering, you know, you hear a song in the same, I guess, um, sense of what she was describing. But if you hear a song, you turn it off and you're like, can you think of those lyrics again? Or what did the song sound like? And you replay it in your head. That's more like what clairaudient is, you know, and you hear it in the mind and you know so yeah every medium you know we and sometimes i find too mediums also have like a niche or like how do i explain that like with chip for since we've been talking about him you know he had that show psychic children so like he was very drawn in one way to help children too and and bringing about their past lives and what they experience and whatever you'll find that some people are very much on like the investigative side where like maybe they might work with investigators on missing persons or homicides or whatever. And it's almost like, I don't know if it's our interests or just our niche or whatever, we're drawn to a certain path with it. We see or feel things differently and it all just really makes each medium or psychic or whatever different. You yeah, know? absolutely. I am, while we're on this topic, uh, directed uh, and produced a, a documentary, right? And uh, uh, co-director, gentleman, Kendall Welpton, uh, awesome, super smart fellow. He's the director of photography for a lot of these paranormal shows you watch and has been working in the field for quite some time. But uh, the homeowner there was, um, you know, interested in having a psychic visit the house, you know? And at first, not that I was against it, but I was a little, you know, if we're trying to get answers, you, you know, that we can tangibly have for this, you know, documentary or whatever. Um, I don't know if that fits in that, in the scope of that, you know, right. because even if what they're saying is 100% true, uh, there's no way to, to quantify it, you know, unless we just happen to get something that does. But if we don't, you know, we would have to you know how that works. We'd have to right. not, not use that storyline and then it would all be wasted anyway, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was, you know, we should do this for uh, Alice, the, the woman who owns the house. She really wants this. And I said, all right, but um, th we're going to do it my way, uh, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah. and so this sort of blew my mind because I'm the one who did this. I was part of it, right? Yeah. Uh, this, this woman named Jill. Uh, and um, we didn't uh, tell her anything, didn't even let her know what state, uh, you know, she was going to until just uh, prior. Uh, and even then, uh, we put her hotel in a different state, a different city. Uh, she had, she knew uh, nothing, you know, literally. And even then, I mean, I was there. She was picked up from the hotel. I had no idea where she was even going, what she was doing. Zero. Yeah. Uh, she gets there and, you know, maybe she, she, she wasn't uncomfortable because we're all very friendly, right. you know, but she must have had some uneasiness, like, because she really had no idea where she was going. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, all right. Right. Um, but she got there and just knew things that I, I have no idea how she knew. She drew pictures of things that were in the house, you know, uh, and it was, uh, you know, I was sort of like, whoa, you know, how is this uh, uh, quite, you know, happening? Yeah. Because I was, if I had seen that, you know, my head would go, well, they're in on it. You know, that's right. how television works or, or you know, documentary. There. But I was there. I know. Right. I, I'm the yeah. one that facilitated it. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know that didn't happen. And I, I still don't know how to explain it. You know? Yeah. See, that, that's considered evidential mediumship, you know, and, and remote viewing where, you know, you might not even have to be on a location, but you can still see, you know, into that space or the house or wherever it might be. And that's, that's the type of mediumship, I think, that does give you that wow moment. How could they have known that? You know, they don't know anything about it. It's like blindfolded, take the blindfold off and read. And, you know, I think that's what sets certain people apart, too, in that field is having that very strong ability in that sense to bring about such validating information, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I find it fascinating. I do. And I don't know if it's, was it the house in between? Is that the? Yeah. Deck? Well, okay. thanks. Look at You're you. welcome. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, well, and I did, um, I did an interview with Anthony Cross, who I think, I'm not, I think he worked, did he work on that with you? I'm not quite sure, but he's, he's been on a couple different things and he had mentioned uh, the house in between. I'm like, oh, I kind of know Steve. Um, okay. But, and then I, I watched it. So, um, and you can find that on Amazon, right? That, yeah, it's everywhere. Anywhere you can rent movies, all those places. I too. Amazing. Yeah, it's on yeah. yeah uh, it's amazing. Thank great. you. Uh, yeah, but she, Jill, the, the psychic in that, uh, she was she was great. Yeah. Super nice too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we used real science, you know. It took me uh, probably 30, 35 physicists, you know, to find one that would talk to me on camera. Right. Uh, <laughs> that sort of thing. And, and me and, and the other... One of the other producers, Vera, uh, you know, tried to get a geologist for months. Uh, yeah. They all were like, paranormal, hang up. You know, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'll lose yeah. my job if I talk to you. You know, they right. <laughs> didn't want any part of it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it worked out great because the, the two physicists that we talked to were, were perfect and, and just brilliant, honestly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and let's hop off paranormal for a moment. You're also a musician. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, that I'm going to, you might be like, Tessa, you need to stop now with, you know, bringing this up. But I really think that anybody, it's literally, I say it pretty much almost every week. And which is why I, I always try to tie in entertainment to the spirit world. Because I think that people who do carry a level of intuition in whatever avenue that might mean, you know, and for you, like we said, it's more energetic and things like that. But I think that you channel that kind of stuff and, into an art form music for you you know i'm a dancer i'm an aerialist and i use that in my casino show and you know so I, when i learned that you were a musician yeah. you know i think do you do you feel like you kind of channel and you know kind of i always talk about like a sponge you know like you, you go on like an investigation right and you you just soak all this stuff up in you and then you got to release it right so do you do that through music or what is really your release for everything hmm, that's a good question um you know music I've never really looked at it as a, a release. Uh, I've looked at it as a, a creative outlet, which I guess is a release. Um, that's a better, better wording yeah, for it. <laughs> a, <laughs> um, Yours is better. We'll take that. <laughs> uh, One know. point for Steve, zero Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it, 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 it is. It's a little cathartic, I guess, in, in that sometimes you just, go somewhere for a little while and you realize something else is, you know, where'd that double paradiddle come from? I didn't right. even think that was coming out, you know, during, you, you just don't know. And, and uh, so there was a bit of that. Um, yeah. That what really, was it called? A paradiddle? Is that what you said? Well, yeah, that's a. Yeah. Paradiddle is in tap too. I did tap since I was three. Really? And there's something called a paradiddle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Does it go right, left, right, right, left, right, left? It left? does. It's like da 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 Yep. <laughs> paradiddle, paradiddle. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That means okay, you can so play drums, and I can. You could tap well, dance. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try them. <laughs> oh gosh. Talk about a show. The one person that would like to see. Yeah. Talk, exactly. Talk about a show, and he fell down again. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, that's amazing. So, do you just do it recreationally? You play. What do you play? So, you play drums. Do you play anything else? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I can mess around on guitar and that sort of thing but i can't noodle or anything you know but i know my chords and, and can make my right my way around the fretboard uh that, that's about it drums and and that uh you know uh, it's always been recreation in bands you know my whole life and, and played shows and that sort of thing and for a brief time I was in a band that was making some money which was uh, fun i remember the first time i got because in metal music you know uh, it's a little rare to make money usually you're you know, sleeping on couches or something. You know, you're not too, <laughs> doing yeah. too much. Uh, but I remember the first time, like at the end of a gig, I handed an envelope with some money and I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, I was like, this never happened in metal. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was a, a very brief uh, bit of time. But yeah, always in and out of drums. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, for me, it's dance, so. Yeah, dance, aerial arts and things like that. But you're right, it is like a creative outlet, you know? And um, that's why, you know, like I said, that's why I like to tie in entertainment with the spiritual world. I, I have this 
weird theory that it's connected somehow, you know, and a lot of artists have intuitive abilities and we channel a lot of things that we're going through in life. And, you know, I've had actors on here, Disney animators, um, you know, and things like that and just different forms of art, different forms of entertainment. And then how does the intuitive part of them channel into yeah. what they do? Have you talked to uh, Nick Graff at all? I did. I actually yeah, was just he, messaging him oh, okay. and he was like, I just text Steve. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'm just about to talk to him. <laughs> I just did hit his interviews coming up this week. It's going to air, uh, well, you know, Thursday, the 17th. Oh, okay, so. cool. Yeah. He, he's a musician. Uh, you may yeah. have covered that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So there, I think there is a, if it's not music, it's, it's something. They're all yeah. artistically like, you know. Right. You see what I mean, though? Like yeah. there's a connection and you don't really, I don't think people realize it, but mm -mm. I think every form of art is truly like an intuitive, creative channel in some way. And, you know, um, people who, people who take on things, whether it be the paranormal field, mediumship, like, um, you know, even if you look at healthcare workers, like nurses and whatever, you're still healing, you're still taking on, you're using intuitive abilities to know what that patient needs. And you'll find that a lot of these people have some form of art that they're good at, or they do on the side or whatever. And, um, you know, so that's why when I did my casino show, I combined the two. So I did readings in the crowd, but then I ended it with a performance because it's oh, my okay. way of channeling, you know? That's cool. Yeah. In the, the narrative of your show, do you, you know, show how it mixes and then end it with the, the art side of it? Kind or? of. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah, kind of. And, and I'm waiting to get back on a stage so that I could do more of it. I was kind of figuring it out as I go, you know, I'm like, luckily I had wonderful people, Christian Printup at uh, Seneca Niagara Casino. He gave me the stage and I was like, I have this idea. Can I do it? And he was like, yeah, go ahead. You know? And, and so I was very lucky that he gave me that opportunity and I created Every other place that I had looking into got shut down and I'm just waiting. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, you know, me reading and um, I used a song. So like my closing performance, for example, was to a song that my grandmother used to sing to me as a kid. But then I found like this new age version of it, like this, you know, this different version that worked as like a performance piece. And so it tied into like my grandmother who, you know, cause a lot of people's family members come through to give messages. And it was kind of my way of showing an expression of what my grandmother would say to me. Oh, See what I mean? That's, yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. Like, so you're. Hmm. I do the yeah. the lira like um, Cirque du Soleil. Oh. Wow. That's so they actually cool. they let me rig a hoop at the casino. I was Ooh. like, yes. <laughs> do you do it over a net? Yes. Oh. I know. <laughs> gosh. Why not? You're gonna. You're... Um. A lot, I mean, it just, I think it depends on the height. Like uh, mine wasn't very high. It was probably, I don't remember, six feet, seven feet off the ground. It wasn't crazy. You know, it was, um, it was the smaller of the two. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> jump seven feet. I thought it was. I'd let fall on my head from seven feet. That's you true. a net up there. A little, I know. At least a, a, a pool or something. Yeah. There, I mean, there are, depending on the venue, depending on the height, there are different regulations that you need to follow, you know, whether it be a mat or a net or whatever. But um, I was within regulation to do without. Uh, okay. So it was definitely risky. But it was great. It came out great. I'll have to send you a clip of it. It was, it was fun. And I just can't wait to get back on stage. Soon, hopefully. You know, Soon. country's doing what it needs to do, but this is true. Uh, we'll work this out. And hopefully in a few months, Yeah. you'll be on the stage above a net. Above a net. <laughs> I'll be like, listen, guys, we have to have a net because Steve told me that yeah. I have to have a net. <laughs> yeah. Well, that leads me to ask you, you know, what can people who are watching, like, what should, is there anything coming up, anything that you'd like to talk about for you that you're working on for people to look for? Yeah, thanks. Um, we have, of course, um, the rest of season two of Ghost Nation uh, starts airing October 17th. Yay. And um, yeah, and then we have uh, a Halloween special, a two hour Halloween special on Halloween night at 8 p.m. Oh, that's fun. And uh, I mean, it's it's awesome, uh, but I feel a little sad for the country. It, you know, trick-or-treating is, is canceled in most places. I know. Um, but if you have to have a good substitute, 
It would be uh, why not Ghost Nation? The Ghost Nation, and that is actually a mashup with the Kindred Spirits gang. So it's, oh, uh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amy and Adam, a uh, uh, very, very close, uh, very, very close friend. Sadly, yeah. uh, Chip uh, wasn't there. Um, this happened during quarantine. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Chip. Uh, sadly, but uh, we have uh, Amy Adam. Uh, they joined us uh, at uh, a mansion, and it was. It was so fun. All oh, they kept cool. doing is saying, this is, you know, we see each other quite a bit. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm very fortunate to see Amy and Adam, Yeah. you know, every couple months uh, we bump into someone somewhere, uh, or excuse me, we bump into each other somewhere. Sure. Um, but this is the first time we've worked together in, in maybe almost uh, 10 years, you know, so it, it's, it was. How cool. It was so fun. Uh, all we kept doing is hugging and, and, you know, all night in yeah. tears, just say, this is so Aww. fun, please. Yeah. Uh, that's Halloween yeah. night, yeah. So, oh, that's great. Uh, we have that coming up. And uh, yeah, the documentary, of course, is out, The House in Between. And uh, we all took place, uh, at least most of the paranormal investigators, I think there are five or six of us uh, in a Halloween documentary that'll also be on Travel Channel. Uh, all about Halloween, like I uh, love the it. spirit of it and the history of it and what it means to people. And yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun and a very cool idea for a documentary. It's like a, a fan film about Halloween. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so that's airing in October as well. Uh, you can go to Travel Channel for all their air schedule and times. And all that oh, stuff. great. Uh, well, that's well, exciting. Just, yeah. Yeah. Great. I mean, if we can't be at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, why not? Watch Travel Channel and watch you guys. Why are you going? Oh, well, you gave me that look. Are you going? No, really? <laughs> you know, uh, had had plans to go, uh, and obviously it was canceled and that sort of yeah. thing. And, and then, um, uh, sadly, you know, we had to push our October dates because uh, we'll still be uh, filming. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Discovery and, and Travel Channel have a pretty strict guideline when it comes to you know, us being able to film and rightly yeah. so, you know, sure. they don't want to sit down at, at Disney World you know, right. <laughs> with a, a bunch of people and then, you know, coming to work a, a few days later. So, right. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. You're great. You know, you thank you it. so much for taking the time out to talk and I'm really excited for everything you have coming up. And, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Hopefully I can make it to one of your shows when they yeah. start happening again. would love it. Awesome. Thanks yeah. for having me. And it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Steve. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. We're back. Let me fix this microphone. All right. Okay. Steve is awesome. Steve was fun to talk to. Uh, there's a lot of different things coming up for Halloween. A lot of different live events, a lot of different things like that. Um, been getting calls already. I want to do this before I, so, okay, the call in line is 716-226-0693. I'm going to start taking calls shortly. Uh, but I promised everybody that I would draw a name for, sorry, be patient, I'm horrible with names, so I don't want to screw this up, but I, I was going to pull a name <laughs> for uh, the winner of the free 15-minute reading. Those of you who, uh, sorry, clearly I can't multitask this week. I think it's Mercury <laughs> retrograde, <laughs> and I'm trying to, like, multitask, and I can't. Okay, so the winner of the free 15-minute reading is... Drum roll. Uh, where is her name? Sandra. Where's your last name? Sandra Forletta. So if you're watching Yay. Sandra, I'll put it in the comments too. Sandra Forletta. Congratulations. Congratulations. I will contact you and uh, we can get your free 15 minute reading set up. All right. So that's exciting. Peter, is there any uh, messages, comments that I can? Oh. They hey. get started early. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> oh, first oh, actually, I'm going to totally cut you off. This is before my mind goes somewhere else. Yeah. Amanda Johnson, she was watching my live feed. Hi, Amanda, and hi to your mom and dad. Um, she was at one of my live shows. Well, actually, she's come to a couple of my live shows. She's wonderful, so is her family. And she had asked if I will be doing another live gallery show anytime soon. And uh, I will say this without any information behind it just yet until things are confirmed, but I am trying to plan a live show around all of this crazy, you know, the restrictions and things that we have. But following regulations, I am looking into a couple venues, more so in the Buffalo area to start off with, uh, to do a live gallery show. So oh, hopefully great. I can post about that soon. Will the, uh, will, if the spirits appear, do they have to wear masks? <laughs> 
<laughs> Good question. <laughs> well, there you go. Good question. All right, I will take a call. Certainly. And then we can jump to some comments. Hi, you're on a night with the medium. Hi, um, I have a question for Tessa. Hi, yeah, who are we talking to and where are you calling from? Okay, actually, it's my husband. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yes, hi. Hi. Hi, honey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? What's your first name? My name is Vincent. How are you? Hi, Vincent. I'm doing very well. Where are you guys calling from? I'm calling from Claremont. Wonderful. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, funny. <laughs> Yes, real quick. Okay. Uh, my question is, I'm trying to, just recently, a friend of mine passed away in 1993. Okay. And all of his friends are basically calling me since I live in Florida. He died in New York. We were both offices together. And uh, we had the funeral there for the offices. And we brought him and reburied him, you know, and we had the funeral again here in Florida. Okay. And apparently, basically... What I'm asking is, it was supposed to be a headstone, and I don't want to get into it, but there was no headstone. It was just a military plot, and we're all chipping in again and putting the headstone for him, all right? Uh, is, is, is there any bad feelings on that towards him? Does he want the original one, or would it be grateful if we get the headstone like we all agreed in the beginning to get, get it from 27 years later? Yeah. We we assumed that his family was going to take care of it sure. with all the money they got from the insurance and everything. And, you know, if they need the money for something else, that's fine. But, yeah. I mean, we we did not know about this. I, when I moved to Florida four years ago, I was I was, I was was deeply hurt because I couldn't even find the plaque because it was just covered. Nobody's been taking care of his grave. I stopped that. I've been taking care of it myself now. Yeah. And... and let me ask so, you this before I proceed. What is uh, your friend's first name? Yes, ma'am. His first name, we call him Billy. Was this a quick passing, like something unexpected? Yes, And why do much. I feel like somebody went up from behind him? Would that make any sense to you? Like, why do I feel like it was like a, like he wouldn't have seen it coming, but something came up from behind. Do you understand what he's showing me? Uh, there's rumors he died in a car crash. Okay, so he, he hit, uh, yeah, and there was rumors that blindsided. Uh, that could also be symbolic. Blind, being blindsided. Yes. Um, okay. No, I want to say first of all, um, it's funny because he says there's been a lot of things done in memory of me. Like he shows me this long timeline, and I saw a lot of yes. different things that have been done. And it's it's weird because is there number one? There's something done yearly. That's the first thing that he showed me. Like something is done yearly for him, whether it be a memorial service, something, however you would understand that. And then I feel like collectively mm -hmm. there was something done, whether it be like a tattoo or something permanent, because he showed he literally took like a stamp and like stamped it on his arm or something. It was almost like there was something in that nature that was done for him. Um, so however you understand okay. that. And then I want to look at, you're talking about the headstone. I always remind people That's when we, um, when us here in the physical world, when we make decisions for our loved ones who have passed, if it's coming from a true place of um, like a good intention, if it's coming from a place of love and in honor of him, they're never like, resentful towards that there's never negative feelings it's almost like they it's weird because I keep hearing like I trusted him more than anybody you guys were like brothers correct because he was like I trusted him more well, than anybody. Yeah. It, and I don't know if you guys yeah. like, joked about being like related or if you guys were very similar like people thought that you guys were related in a sense we all were all, okay. all of us Wonderful. we all were so take that into consideration <clears throat> in regards to making those mm -hmm. decisions he trusts you See what I mean? So, Thank you. yeah, he trusts you, and uh, I would 100% go with your intuition, your instincts on what it is that you're doing for him yes. and know that he's with you through that. That's, that's, that's fine. I just, you know, I just, <laughs> that, that couldn't be, you couldn't answer it any better. Wonderful. I do agree with that. Yeah. I thank, I thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for calling in. Tell your wife the same, and I wish you guys all the best. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You be healthy, love. Thank bye you. Bye. You as well. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. It's strange, too, because I get that a lot. It's like people, you know, we question ourselves here in the physical world more so than anything, you know, and we don't, we're not taught really to trust our intuition from the get-go. You know, there's always logic and judgment and all these things that come into play. That's why children and 
animals are so intuitive. They don't have that logic to them. You know, um, they feel and see spirit. And uh, as kids, especially when I was a kid, I saw spirit even more vividly than I do now because there wasn't any of those things interfering. So I always tell people, if it's coming from a good place, your intentions are good. Uh, people on the other side, if you're if you're working for them, you know they they know that. Trust your intuition more. Um, all right, Peter, is there any? Oh, quite a comments? few. But uh, we one of the first that came in was from Diane Grupico, and she said, "My daughter Krista lost one of her twin boys in May. Um, he was only two months old. His name was Tristan. Uh, today is five months since he passed." Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure what a question would be behind this other than whether he's okay or at peace. I do feel like there is something, I'm being drawn to like the heart area or something in the lungs because I get drawn to the chest with him. Um, it's almost like he was, so, and, and I know this is so hard to hear, uh, children, obviously me being a mother, it, it holds a very special place for me regarding children who have passed. So my condolences to you and your family for that. Um, but I do want to say that there's something, it's almost like he, he wasn't supposed to be here. He was supposed to be an angel for the other child, uh, and he will always be. Um, I also feel that there's going to be an opportunity for this soul to possibly come through again. So I don't know if, if did she say her daughter? Yes, I'm, her daughter, Krista. Um, so I guess it would be a grandson. Okay. So Krista, I feel like there would be... Um, an opportunity for the soul to come back around if she, her free will chooses to do so. So I, I just heard that immediately. So, um, but, but know that especially children, you know, their souls are always at peace. They're always around you uh, and always will be, unless, like I said, they have the opportunity to come back through and spend time here in the physical world with us again. Um, okay. Is there any other comments I could take before I get? No, if call? you get a call, I would take it. Just pointing out this evening that, um, the purple in the background is part of our com um, observation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was going to do it. There we go. There we go. The purple beside you. Oh, lovely. Like the uh, the price is right. Yes, yes. Or Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the purple is there because of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And uh, yeah. hopefully everyone will wear purple and just be aware of what we can do to help those who suffer through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Peter. Let me uh, take this call. Hi, you're on a night with a medium. Hi. Hi, who am I talking to? Um, my name is Rochelle. Michelle? Uh, Rochelle, oh, I'm sorry. Rochelle, beautiful. Okay. Uh, thank you for calling in. Do you have a question for me? Um, I do. I was just wondering if there were any messages from the other side for me. I've lost quite a few family members over the last few years. So okay. Just wondering what's going on. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, without a first name to connect with, I keep getting a fa Has your father passed? Um, not my father, but my grandfather okay. has. Because I feel a very, very strong father figure around you. Um, so I, I feel as though he would have taken on more of a fatherly role here in the physical world with you. Um, uh, it's strange. You actually have a couple people that come through, which is, um, uh, okay. You have a father figure, but then you also have... Somebody who, so when I see a mother figure in, in the sense that I just saw it, it means that it's somebody outside of, I don't know if this would be like an aunt or somebody that you would be close to, somebody who would have um, stepped outside the immediate family. So do you have like an aunt who passed as well in, on mom's side of the family? Uh, no, no, not, not an aunt. Um, I, I mean, my, my mom did and also like my mother's mother, so my grandmother. Your mother's mother, okay. Um, you do have a couple people. I feel like I would need to sit with you for a private reading to get through everything. Um, I want to try to connect. Can I have your mother's first name? Yeah, her name is Diane. Diane. Okay. So whenever I get a first name for somebody, it helps me connect directly. Um, know though, before I, before I connect with her, I want you to understand that they're all together. You get like, a, there was a, a good group of people that literally step forward with you. That's why I was like, I don't even know who to go to right now. Uh, so know that they're all <laughs> together, uh, first and foremost. Did your mom have a long-term illness? Because she just showed me my timeline, uh, and a lot of my symbols stay very consistent. So whenever spirit shows me a timeline, it means that there was a progressive illness of some sort. Um, I also feel as though, but I fe the weird thing is, is she showed me the decline at the, at the end. So did she decline faster near the end? Well, maybe, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's, 
like my mom was sick, but we, no one knew she was sick. So her passing was very unexpected. Um, but she did have a progressive so my grandmother. Illness. Yeah, and just okay. no, we no, we didn't even know. So mm-hmm. okay, um, I, I want to stay with mom. I'm, I'm pretty sure because even if you didn't know. Um, that she was sick, what I feel like is she did have something that would have been lingering or would have progressed even if nobody knew about it because then by the time Mm -hmm. she got to the end of it, she showed a fast decline with it. So as long as you understand that Mm -hmm. part of it, that's who I feel I'm connecting with and I'm usually pretty confident when I feel that energy. It feels like Yeah, no, that that definitely makes makes sense. Okay. Um, I want to acknowledge, she keeps saying I didn't want them to know. So I want you to understand that she didn't, she had an idea or she... I almost felt she had a very strong intuition. She had a very, very strong intuition, but so do you, she said. So I want to say that she kind, she knew to an extent, but not fully. And it was almost like by the time they found out, it just happened so quickly. She goes, can you just let them know that I'm okay? Uh, for some, I, they always want you to know that they're okay and that they're at peace, okay? There's never going to be a point where they're not. Um, Of course, there that makes, a, yeah, that, that's actually still like her. It makes complete sense. Yeah. God, there's so much I want to say to you. Um, there's a lot that I want to say to you. What I'm going to have you do is if you can contact me after this so that I can do more of a private reading because I don't, I, I'm very discretional when it comes to things that I say on a live feed. I think there's a lot that needs to be I said. I understand. You understand that? Because I feel like she's saying a lot of things right now that you know that I don't want to put up. <laughs> Okay, so if you can contact no, 100%. me. No, 100%. Like, okay. that makes complete sense. Wonderful. She, was, she literally, like, went like this, like, shushed me. She is like, you got to wait. So, <laughs> so uh, if you can contact me, um, I, I'd like to kind of, we, we could book, like, a phone session. Okay. okay, that would be awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for calling in, and I'm really looking forward to connecting with you and your loved ones. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I've never been shushed like that before. <laughs> I swear to God, I've never. You didn't have my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, your mom came to me when I did uh, uh, Joe Dun- D'Onofrio. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was, but I've ne- like, literally she was like this. She was like, Shh. I felt wow. like I was in trouble. She was like, Shh. um, that's okay. Can we hit a comment that's or have you got a call? No. Yeah, okay. yeah. And this is someone I know has communicated with us before, Sarah M. And I believe she's in Ireland. Oh. Hi, Sarah. Um, could you connect with my friend Jenna, who passed recently? I want to know how she feels, uh, that she's okay in spirit. They're always okay. I, I, I like to reassure people uh, as a whole that when our loved ones pass, regardless of their passing, I feel like this was this was very tragic. Like, I literally saw, hmm, I, Sarah's been having a rough time uh, because I feel like this was a very tragic thing, and I feel like there was something to do with patterns with her. Uh, and that it was almost to the point where this pattern, because I feel like she wants to take some responsibility for what happened in a sense. So I feel like this pattern led to ultimately her passing. Um, and I think the nature of the passing being tragic, I want to say that she she keeps saying, I'm better now, I'm better now. Um, so so know that your friend is okay. She's very much around you. And whatever we deal with here in the physical world, whether it be a physical illness, a mental illness, those are gone when we pass. Um, When they bring it up to me to validate that this is who it is, it's not that they still deal with those things, it's just to validate this is how I passed. These are things, you know, evidential things that happen here in the physical world. Um, But she is okay. Um, I'm very sorry for your loss. I feel feel like there's a lot of questions too regarding her passing. There's a lot of questions that people have around her in regards to what happened. So uh, at at the very least know that she's okay and she's around you. Uh, any uh, other comments? Um, Diane uh, Grupico, who you did the reading for with the two-month-old grandson, yep. says, you have no idea how much that helped me. Oh, good. And, good. Bri- oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Interrupted me? Oh, I thought you were still oh, no, speaking. No, no, no. <laughs> You're the star. <laughs> I just got shushed by a spirit, so, I mean... I'm fine. <laughs> That's going down in our book. And you can hear Ohio Barb over at the audio Barb's console laughing. laughing. At us. I know. And uh, Brittany Kistler, K I S T L E R, says, My aunt's name is Janet. So I think she's looking to connect with her aunt Janet. Brittany Kistler. Okay. Oh, she's got a very, very uh, bubbly personality uh, when I start picking up on Janet. Um, and I feel like, uh, so it's weird because she showed me like uh, 
going from color to black and white, which is odd. And if I can explain why spirit would show me something like that, it's because she had this vibrant personality. Whatever illness that she suffered from caused all of that to kind of go away. Um, I feel like it would have hindered communication. I feel like it would have hindered movement somehow. For whatever reason, I keep feeling like if I had something in my hands, I would want to drop it. So I feel like it would have hindered her mobility, her communication. And this is why she showed me like this vibrant color going to black and white. And it's almost like she goes back to this vibrant color. She wants you to understand that she's back to this person. She's back to this personality. Um, and, and that she's doing okay and she's at peace. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to remind everybody, um, in order to book a private reading with me, please email me at tessadelzappo at gmail.com. You can message me on Facebook, follow me uh, on my YouTube channel for a chance to win a free 15-minute reading. Uh, I'm going to be picking somebody every week. So one more time, what was the name? It was... I'm going to announce the winner for this week one more time. Was it Sandra? There you go. Okay. Forletta. Forletta. Sandra Forletta. She must be Italian. Um, Sandra Forletta, if you can contact me or I will contact you to book your private reading with me. And then next week I will pick somebody else. So, um, yeah, follow me on YouTube. I don't even know who I have on next week. We have a good lineup coming up. Um, good lineup. Oh, actually, next week is going to be Tim Shaw. He's my Ooh. buddy. Yeah, he's going to be fun. Uh, he also does readings and things like that. So uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, you guys, for uh, subscribing, for watching my live shows, and for supporting me. Is there anything else that I forgot, Peter? No, not at all. It's been great having the interviews. Everyone for tuning in. And remember that we're checking both um, uh, Facebook and YouTube. So yes. uh, you can sign into YouTube and subscribe. Uh, follow Tessa Del Zappo. It's always the most, it actually is the best way to follow. The signal is yeah. always so much better. On YouTube, yeah. Yep. And with, uh, are we done? Yeah. Oh, good. Well. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. We, yeah, we are. Um, we are. And like I said, I will pick somebody new next week for a free 15-minute reading with me. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, well, we're going to go out with a little uh, promo from Yowawa Media here regarding a local um, charity effort. So this will be our closing, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Poverty, mental illness, abandonment, and neglect hits the hardest in any city not just a city of wonders. In Niagara Falls, New York, you don't have to walk alone. All it takes is one person, one hand reaching and giving hope. Reach out your hand and help provide that hope through the Help Center. When we give to our vulnerable, our lost and broken, we help build a better city. Consider giving to Valerie Smith's The Help Center 324 Pine Avenue in Niagara Falls, New York. Telephone 716-285-1677. Thank you.